So team, keep it clean. Today, like not even 15 minutes ago, we just got back from a nice nine day vacation where we just completely disconnected from everything. Uh, it feels good to be back, but it felt great to get away and to really, really get away. Like y'all know normally if we go on vacation, y'all see me do like a, a video from whether it's a cruise or a hotel, whatever it may be. Y'all see me do a video from there, but no, 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 not, not this time. This time we were like, nope. We're not going to work. Whatever goes on, whatever happens with the Ravens, it's going to happen. We'll talk about it when we get back. And we will do that uh, throughout this week. But today, today, an article just came out from Bleacher Report. And by the way, we will be on Bleacher Report tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern time. So y'all look out for that. Y'all come through for that live stream. But Bleacher Report, they posted an article that had some very interesting kind of big news and some kind of like uh, something I was a little hesitant about when it came to the Baltimore Ravens. And it had to do with one Odell Beckham Jr. Now, of course, Odell Beckham Jr., um, they signed him to a one-year deal worth up to $18 million. He got uh, about, I think, 15 or 16 mil of that. Um, and then the Baltimore Ravens reworked Odell Beckham Jr.'s deal uh, so they could sort of maneuver the, the dead cap around a little bit because he was originally signed to a one-year uh, deal with four void years on the back of it, uh, and then they reworked it to where I, f I forget exactly what the numbers were after they reworked it, but I know his salary next year at his current rate is $50 million. So obviously they're not going to pay him $50 million. I mean, when you look at what they paid him last year, whatever, Douglas, you might think, oh, maybe Ravens might be crazy enough, but no, nah, they wouldn't do that. But big question that's been going around the Baltimore Ravens and around Ravens fans, what are they going to do with Odell Beckham Jr.? And it's been a very interesting topic to hear people's different takes on it. Should they keep him? Should they bring him back? Should they let him go? What should happen with Odell Beckham Jr.? And I'm not mad at anybody's choice, at anybody's decision, what anybody prefers when it comes to OBJ. For the people who want to keep OBJ, I get it. Like OBJ, the vibe was there. He brings the energy. Uh, and this is a high profile name that brings some extra attention to the Baltimore Ravens. And it's somebody that when he does have the ball in his hands, he, he, he caught pretty much everything thrown his way. And he only had, I think, maybe one drop. So Odell Beckham Jr., when he did get the ball, he did his thing. Now, at the same time with Odell Beckham Jr., for the people who do not want Odell Beckham to stay, I get that too because of the price tag and because he was always hurt. He was always hurt. Odell Beckham Jr. was never healthy. And the biggest question that I continue to have for Odell Beckham Jr., whether he stays with the Baltimore Ravens or not, is will he ever be healthy? Because he's been dealing with injury concerns literally his entire career. So I, I can't be like, all right, well – I expect Odell Beckham Jr. at, what, 31 or 32 years old um, to be fully healthy now. I, I don't think that's a realistic expectation. You, of course, hope that for him, and you wish that he could stay healthy and be healthy, but the expectation, when you think about it realistically, it's like, uh, I, I don't think that's going to happen. But you never know. So with Odell Beckham Jr., again, if people expect him to stay or people expect him to go, I, I, I get both ways. But according to Jeremy Fowler, let's just read this report from – uh, Bleacher Report. It says the Baltimore Ravens may replace one high-profile veteran receiver with another this offseason. ESPN's Jeremy Fowler reported Sunday the AFC North team likely won't re-sign Odell Beckham Jr. So with that part, that really doesn't come as a surprise. I mean, like, again, the, the year that he had with the Baltimore Ravens, it was cool. It was good, but it, it, it obviously goes way beyond the numbers because if you just look at the numbers, it's like, ooh, that's it? That, that's what y'all paid 15, 16 mil for that? Those, no, no, it was a baddie, but it goes beyond the numbers because obviously Odell Beckham Jr. was a huge part in bringing Lamar Jackson back, making him sign with the Baltimore Ravens because Ravens, they had to sign Odell Beckham Jr. They had to do everything in their power in order for Lamar Jackson to return, and it proved to be worth it obviously they didn't finish the job obviously they still got more work to be done but that was a huge stepping stone in bringing lj back but now so with, with that part of the article i'm like okay cool well they not likely to resign odell beckham jr all right i'm cool with that but then this next part i was like uh, i don't know but let, let's read it it says um so they likely won't re-sign Odell Beckham Jr. and noted multiple scouts highlighted Michael Thomas as a potential fit in Baltimore. Now, Michael Thomas, he is somebody that we talked about a lot on here in years past, in previous years. 
But recently, that has definitely been an afterthought. Because when I think about Michael Thomas, I think about somebody who could fit in well with the Baltimore Ravens. Somebody who could catch a lot of those inside slants. A lot of people call him, what they call him? They call him like the slant king or slant daddy, something like that. But anyway, uh, with Michael Thomas, um, he's somebody that with a lot of short pass, he could get a lot of yak and stuff like that. So I feel like he could fit in good there. But then at the same time, we just... Uh, Nothing's official yet. Nothing's official yet. But by this article, what Jeremy Fowler is saying is that the Baltimore Ravens are expected to let Odell Beckham Jr. go. Okay, cool. But to let one injury-prone wide receiver go, okay, cool. But to bring in another one, it's like, uh, okay. I just... Now, if it was at a very low price tag, it wasn't nothing crazy, then... Oh, yeah, come on. Come through, man. But... Anyway, let's just read the article. It says, Thomas will be a free agent when his contract with the New Orleans Saints voids. And Fowler pointed out the Ravens value established veterans at the receiver position. Well, we know that that is certainly true. Uh, EDC has been slowly getting away from what they used to do, but still kind of sticking with it at the same time in his own way. Let's keep going. It said Beckham was just that during a one-year stint in 2023 and helped the team win the AFC North with 35 catches for 565 yards and three touchdowns. So, again, with this, Odell Beckham Jr., he can still play. Is he the Odell Beckham Jr. of old? No. He still got some juice left, though. But, again, with Odell Beckham Jr., with him having juice left, how much of that juice are you getting? How frequent will you get it? How, how often Will he be in the game for you? Will he remain in the game for you? Will he stay in the game for you? So that's just something to think about with Odell Beckham Jr. But he said, the article says, like Beckham, Thomas is a big name in large part because of his previous production. The 2016 second round pick was once considered one of the best wide receivers in the NFL, but hasn't been as a productive of late in large part because of injuries. Yeah. That's the part right there. So he played seven games in 2020, missed the 2021 season, appeared in three games in 2022, and then played 10 games this past season. But the Ravens and other teams will surely be intrigued by the possibility of the 31-year-old rediscovering some of the old form that allowed him to win Offensive Player of the Year in 2019 with 149 catches for 1,725 yards and nine touchdowns. See, that's amazing. See, But that's the thing. I know for me personally, Whenever I will look at the Saints, whenever I will watch them play, I will see Chris Olave doing his thing. He, he's just amazing. Some of the catches that he be making is amazing. His speed and his body control is just out of this world. But then when I will see Michael Thomas play, I will be, I, I will be surprised because I'm like, oh, he he's not hurt right now. But then it, it ended up having, oh, no, Michael Thomas is going to miss this game with injury. Oh, he, no, he's going to miss this game with injury. Oh, he's going to be out for this extended amount of time with injury. So it's like with, with Michael Thomas, again, you, you hope – you, you hope that it's there. This is the same thing I hoped for with Odell Beckham Jr. last year. I hope that he will be back. I hope that he will be healthy, even though expectations were low for his health. But we can't keep banking on health forever. I mean, excuse me, we can't keep banking on hope forever when it comes to health for these players. We talked about this when the Baltimore Ravens signed Sammy Watkins back a couple years ago. If a player shows you who they are, you got to believe him. You got to believe him. Sammy Watkins, throughout his career, missed a lot of time with injury. <laughs> what happened when he came to the Baltimore Ravens? Yeah. It was no different. Odell Beckham Jr. was no different. If they were to get Michael Thomas, I couldn't. I would hope that it would be different, but I couldn't realistically expect it to be different. The only way, in my personal opinion, that I, I would not have, because Michael Thomas is nice, but how nice is he now? The only, the only way I wouldn't have an issue with them signing Michael Thomas is if that price tag was super low. Was super low. Just my opinion. Though. It ain't my money. But, yeah. Anyway, it says, uh, it was Thomas's fourth straight season with more than 1,100 receiving yards to start his career and remains his best selling point ahead of free agency. They're referring to that 2019 year where he caught 149 catches for 1,725 yards. Says the Ravens wouldn't need him to carry the offense like the Saints asked him to do at times during that stretch. And he likely wouldn't face many double teams given the presence of Zay Flowers and Mark Andrews. Ho, 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 ho. Y'all just going to forget about Rashad Bateman like that and Nelson Aguilar, Isaiah, lot like we got some guys now. 
We got some guys. Don't sleep. But anyway, it says throw in the reigning. Oh, yeah. That's true. It says throw in the reigning NFL MVP, Lamar Jackson. That That is very true. The reigning MVP. Yeah, that's his right now. That's his. And again, we know what Lamar Jackson, whenever he finishes a season, he's right there in that conversation. And actually, for, for two out of the three seasons, well, he hasn't been hurt at the end of the year, thank goodness. For two out of the three seasons where he hasn't been hurt at the end of the year, he's won MVP. Or where he, where he started the full season, obviously. Because 20, 2018, that's his rookie year. He didn't start the full season. He finished it, but he didn't start the full season. But 2019, finished the whole season. Boom, MVP. 2020, finished the season. He was in the MVP talks, but he ain't winning. 2021, got hurt at the end of the year. 2022, got hurt at the end of the year. 2023, finished the whole season. Boom, MVP again. So, with Lamar closing out the season, he's more likely than not to get an MVP. But anyway, so shout out to him. But it says, uh, throw in reigning NFL MVP Lamar Jackson, throwing him the ball. And Baltimore sounds like quite the landing spot for Thomas at this point of his career, just like it was for Beckham in 2023.